What up, what up, what up? Back at it again. We're here, Real Fans Podcast. I'm your boy, Gabe. That's Julian. I always mix it up. Always, That's Julian over always. there. <laughs> That's JoJo. We're recording on a Saturday, which is very rare. We usually record try to midweek. It's a morning a show. Saturday, Saturday it's morning. morning show. Listen, you, know, you know what it took uh, to get me up this morning? Listen, JoJo don't get up for shit. If it's not the gym, if it's not work, he, he's not getting up for nothing. He's, look, his, not his even beard the gym. Is, if it's his, not for work. <laughs> his beard is unbrushed. Look how nappy that shit looks like. He needs Yo, to fucking comb man. through that shit right there. I hope you Damn, comb He's starting off strong. Day. Oh, he had that, that, that coming that after people <laughs> over there in Texas. Listen, we had to come strong. Listen, right now we're in the middle. Everybody knows we're in the middle of May. You're calling, you know, coming towards the end of May. We're in the middle of NBA playoffs. These guys are wearing their jerseys. We're gonna talk about the NBA later. It's all. There's a lot. We're gonna be NBA heavy today. But first, we gotta talk about the sport that always keeps making news. The NFL. NFL is always making news, regardless of what time of the year it is. There's no football hasn't been played for months. The Super Bowl champions have been determined. Uh, um, I'm, fly Eagles fly. I'm rooting for them next year. Hopefully they'll wow. make it again. Wow. Shout out to Whoa. shout out to, wow. shout out to the Whoa. Chiefs. Whoa. Hey, listen. Hey, wait, wait. Whoa. I'm not trying to be controversial. Listen, it's Whoa. fucking me. Man, it's man. Wagon. Let's talk about football. Man, what happened? Hey, wait, Let's say football for the football. We're recording Let's on a Saturday morning. And what happened to swim? Man. Dolphin swim. What happened? What happened to that? Listen. What happened to the Listen, it's gonna be the Eagles and my Dolphins, but let's not talk about that right now. We got we got all year to talk about that shit. All right, let's talk about the NFL. Uh, mm. I think the biggest news like coming out, obviously, like for the past year, has been the Washington Commanders, obviously with uh, their transition. I think the uh, the past you know, so like, few years, yeah, I the mean, past it's, few it's, years, whole tons of controversy, you know, harassment allegations, uh, name you know, change, kind of workplace allegations, name change. I love that. Listen. I was down for football team. Was it named a football team? I'm like, me, this is a better too. name. I was all, better name. Football team, better name. It's they like it's it. such a historic team. Yeah. It just like it, it fits like the colors. Like it, it reminds you of like the 1930s. Like we see those guys with the leather helmets or whatever. Oh, it just like it looked fucking dope. And then they changed it to the Commanders, which I guess isn't bad, but yeah. I don't know. Football team was cool. So, anyways, uh, we had. Uh, Dan Snyder been embroiled in a bunch of controversy. Everybody's been trying to push him out. And it seems like in the past year, year and a half, he was like one of these uh, owners that like the other owners don't like, right? Because, you know, the owner ownership in the NFL, this is like a small, you know, a, 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 a boys club of, of 32, right? This is like a, it's like a golf kind of membership or whatever. of Just 32 people. Country and, club. And, and, you know, everything coming out of news with uh, Dan Snyder and the Washington team is, you know, um, you know, he's too hot, right? Uh, one of the biggest things that I heard was that, uh, that, that the owners didn't like him because because he's so controversial or whatever that he couldn't get it, he couldn't make deals in, in, in Washington, D.C., right? Because, you know, talk about the, minor, getting new, the minority owners, right? Yeah, yeah. Getting getting a new stadium, getting new money, uh, whatever. But it's been official. It's been officially. Uh, he, he, uh, Dan Snyder is selling the Washington Commanders. About to sell it for six billion dollars, and I think when he bought it, Joe, when he bought it, it was like something really? dumb. He bought it for like yeah. three hundred million, or it was something yeah. very small. It was very below a billion how dollars. Ago, how long ago was that? How many? Oh, years bro, ago? he bought it from his dad. From like, wow, I can't even tell you. I'm gonna look at it up as we talk about it, but uh, it is official. Um, and, and and leading up to this, there was a lot of news because uh, you know there's talk about Jeff Bezos. Obviously, Jeff Bezos, billionaire, has way more money than probably. Everybody in the NFL, like combined, like if you had all the other owners and then. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, the dude's like the richest, one of the richest men in the world. And I remember hearing stories, stories and whispers that like Dan Snyder didn't want to sell to Jeff Bezos. I mean, Jeff Bezos, uh, I don't think he, I don't think he lives in D.C., but I know he, he owns the Washington the, Post. Yeah, the, the Washington, Washington Post, Post was a news the out of D.C. It's a newspaper, a news outlet out of D.C. And so there was talk about that. And, and like one of the things like I'm going to sell the team, but never the best Jeff Bezos. But it's official. He's selling the team six billion dollars. I'll go to uh, Julian first. How do you feel about this news? As far as like new ownership, uh, Dan Snyder in general, and and what this means for the NFL overall. I mean, I think I, I would imagine if you're a Commanders fan, you're probably ecstatic right now. So it's definitely not like inked, it, but it's like all but done. Essentially, yeah. it's just a matter of like when it's officially through. I don't really know the new ownership group. It's like a combined group, which is kind of weird for the NFL because normally you see that in other sports. NFL is more known for like single owner entities. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so it's a little odd, but I think this group, I think it's like a part of like Magic Johnson's group or, or I know Magic Johnson's involved in it of some sort. Yeah. It's um, a and they order. like they own they own the Devils. They own the um, 
man, who else do they own? I think it was like the the Devils and some somebody else. I don't know. Uh, let me look that up. Yeah, I'll look but, it up. Like yo, so they're just going after any available team right now. Is that is that what they do? They just I, to I, I, I guess so. I I guess I, I think it's gonna be kind of odd. Because like I think ownership in NFL plays such a big part because it is like yeah. single owner entities. So I don't. What was the game? You got it. Led by Josh Harris, co-owner of the 76ers, NHL Sixers, uh, New Jersey Devils. Uh, yeah, it was the Sixers. I I knew it was another. I knew it was a basketball team. I yeah. couldn't think of. Also, I quick, say Nets. Quick note: He bought the uh, Dan Snyder bought the team for eight hundred million, and now he's gonna sell it for six billion. So pretty much like six times what he Damn. bought it for. All right. So go ahead, go ahead, continue. Yeah, six hundred percent is insane. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you, I, I hope that this leads to something good because obviously, like dealing with all the, you know, when, at the end of the day, like when you have bad ownership, it it trickles down and it leads to like bad teams. And when was the last time the the Washington, whatever you want to call football them now, team, has been, <laughs> whatever you want, whatever you want to call them now, has been like relevant. I mean, they've been bad forever. They had that one year where they squeezed into the playoffs with Robert Griffin. And that was about it. I mean, you haven't seen anything from the Redskins as like a dominant football team since the nineties, late, late eighties when they actually won it all. So, and I think a lot of it has to do with ownership, you know, like we see, think about all the bad teams that are in this league right now. They're due to bad ownership. And I think as a Redskins fan, you have to hope that – or Commanders fans, you have to hope that this guy can come in here and, like, reshape the way it is. I mean, we've seen kind of what the work they've done with the Sixers. I don't know about the Devils. I think the Devils are a playoff team. I'm not sure. I'm not too well versed. Well, they were. Yeah, they but. were in contention. I think they, they played against the – there was like a Subway Series. They played against the Islanders, New, the New York Islanders. Uh, so, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're a tough team. Yeah. Uh, as far as any and it's and then um yeah i mean they've shown history of like investing in teams obviously look at the sixers like they're constantly trying to invest and try to keep it relevant um so if there's any indication of what we've seen from the other teams this is a good sign and also to if you're a fan and especially a season ticket holder gosh you gotta hope that they do something with that stadium that stadium is atrocious. Yeah. Fans had poop water like falling on the. Oh head. yeah, I heard you know what? Wow. You brought that up. I remember that. <laughs> wow, that was like early in the season. That was like preseason, or that was early. Wow. Dude, it's so that. bad. And then like, That's unacceptable. and the thing too is, this doesn't even accept like the. This doesn't even like um reach out to like the Redskins fans, but like I mean, gosh, you want to say Redskins fan? The uh, Commanders fans is it's not. It's just DC as a whole, like. I'm sure, like the city officials stuff, hate him because it's so hard to get events there because it's so bad. Literally, yeah. DC, the nation's capital, got cut out of the World Cup venue because that stadium was so shit. Yeah. So now we're going to be like probably the first country ever to host the World Cup without having a game in our capital, which is insane. They had to literally bring in Baltimore as like their bid. They Sorry, did like a yeah. DC and Baltimore did like a joint bid to like, and I'm like, that is just sad that like FIFA came in here. And I was like, Oh hell no. And like yeah. walked out Should and like, it. how do you, and it's so crazy to me. It's like, man, you get all this money from this team and you can't even like renovate it. We're not even saying like, I don't know if they need to build a new one. Maybe the bones of the stadium are okay. And they could just like renovate the whole thing. I know that's like the, with the Jaguars and count the dolphins did. And, um, just renovating while the bones are still good. But, I mean, I would imagine it's a good day if you're a Commanders fan. And hopefully, I mean, they just signed uh, Eric Bieniemy to a contract for their new coach. So, um, now this happening. Too bad you couldn't get Jeff Bezos. I, maybe this, I wonder if this means Jeff Bezos was never really interested. It was probably all just hype. I, I don't know, because I always heard his name. I, I, I never heard, I never heard like him say it out loud or, or like sources. I think from he him. wants games like with yeah. Amazon. With Prime. him and Amazon. That's See, that's the is. thing. There's a football connection with mm. Amazon and Jeff Bezos. So I was wondering but if I there's, like, a, a, there's a DC connection. There's a football Amazon connection with Jeff Bezos. But you know, I don't think he personally. If if there's money in it to be had, I'm sure it's like, you know, with all these billionaires, man, it's a fucking toy. It's like. He, Bezos doesn't make if he if he buys a team he's not going to be making money off the NFL it's just going to be like a, a fun thing to have just to retire you know he got you know recently famously divorced from his wife and you know maybe maybe you just you feel like uh, it's like I want to be crazy I, you know I, people <laughs> new people get into you know I mean that's that his, well uh, you could also say yard. too like how much is that is liquid like how much is that that he can actually oh man like, he's bro he's got to be liquid bro he's got to be liquid 
Because obviously Amazon, most of his money is from, yeah, but it's net worth. It's what Amazon is worth. It's not like so much. I, I mean, I'm sure he has a shit ton. Yeah, I was probably say, over a billion in a bank account. Simply from Amazon, but yeah. I'm telling you, if. But I, like, I'm, could he just drop six billion? Like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know at the end of the well, day. I mean, when I you do saying, like, how much like that, that, you don't pay all, the whole thing up front. I mean, obviously, it's over a course of years. Like, you might put up a big amount initially. And then yeah, that's all. true. You're not gonna drop six hundred mil. Like no one's, no one's ever gonna do that. Like, um, but he has collateral for it regardless. Like he has property, as businesses, so they yeah. they know he's trustworthy. Like you're gonna get the money from this man. But, so, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, real quick, based off of Bloomberg, this is from 2023. He's twelve point seven billion cash is what shit. he's worth. Eleven point two billion private cash. Ninety six. How do they billion. know that? Ninety-six billion twenty-three. This is from Bloomberg. Listen, I don't follow. It's this probably show. what's in his bank accounts, to be honest. No, like, cash. He's he, cash. He's twelve billion. Cash. He's twelve billion. And guess what? They just sold the team for six. So he's worth uh, double dude. of whatever the team is. Um, so <laughs> there you go. Um, I, I, you know what? I'm happy for the fans, though. I'm happy for the fans because you know what? When you yeah. have a shit owner and, and and you've been asking for this guy to be fucking gone and get rid of him. You know what? For me, as a Dolphin owner, Stephen Ross. Get his ass up out here. Let's sell it to somebody else. Stephen Ross, great businessman. He, you know, he he knows how to. I don't think he's the worst owner, though. I think Dave as far as a businessman, I'm not. I'm not going to shell him as a businessman. Him as a person and whatever the fuck he does in his personal time, people who invites around him don't like it. I wish we would get somebody else in here, somebody that I would be more agreeable with. No, I root for the team. Tom I don't root for Stephen Ross. He's trying That's to get you fine. Tom Brady, man. But I will you know, say with like the Stephen Ross thing, I think he. Generally tries to do the best for the Dolphins. At least, I mean, he renovates. You know the what? Stadium. Yeah, he's great. You know what? He wants he, to win. He spends money on players. He tried he to get to Tom win. Brady. He wants to get top. He wanted to tamper and get Is Tom he shady? Brady. He wants yeah. to win. He wanted to get rid of fucking uh, you know uh, Brian Flores, Flores to get fucking Sean Payton. He wants to win very much, uh, but also I don't like. It. I don't like. He just don't like. On a personal level. Uh, I don't know him personally, but the, his personal. Oh, you know Let's personally? talk about the commanders. Let's talk about the commanders. Talk about <laughs> you know him personally? Uh, get, you Jordan, what do you think about started. all this? Are you talking yeah, about I them? mean, like, honestly, I think this is great for the fans. If you have a passionate fan base, like, every once in a while, you do need this change, right? Especially if, if they're the ones screaming for it, right? New stadium, new ownership. You want someone that's involved, that's a invested. Change. Like, God damn, bro. Like, we, we always know it year by year, like, the commanders, they'll they'll fight tooth and nail, right? Like we know they'll have big games, right? They'll pull off these ridiculous wins against these top teams. I don't know. And but where where does it get them though? It's like they have this like false hope, right? This hope and belief, and hey, maybe something's gonna happen and it never does. Um, first off, if I was a season ticket holder, I'd fucking sell those. I would even buy those tickets if I'm gonna spend how many games at, at that shitty field? I ain't sitting and, below and, anything. I'm like, no, you know I'm sitting below. It I'm might be generational. Water dripping on my head. Yeah. And like the bathrooms aren't flushing and I can't even <laughs> wash my hand. Like what? No, like, come on. But, First you know, off. a lot of, you know, the 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 history goes back into like the 60s, 70s. So it's a long history. So maybe, you know, they passed down that kind of, you know, that kind of generational like, yo, this is our team. We grew up. My grandpa watched it. My father watched it. Yeah, I watched yeah, it. Yeah. I give it to yeah. my kid. Huge so it's a, it's an older franchise. Yeah. In general, so you know, I, I can understand how, it, and they used to win like back in the day, like seventies, eighties, whatever. You know, before I was ever born, um, so I can understand how like people have an attachment to that that kind of franchise, especially historically in the NFL. But in the modern day, recently at the the past twenty years, they haven't yeah. really been relevant. No, although I'd like to trying to see, I'm trying to see how What's old up? this stadium they, is. They need to invest, right? Yo, your owner needs to invest in your stadium, man. But like, that's I'm that was the thing. I think. The biggest thing was like because he was so toxic, because Dan Snyder was so toxic, he couldn't make any deals anywhere. He couldn't make deals in Virginia. He couldn't make deals in Maryland. He couldn't make anywhere in that DC area. What they call the DMV? uh, DMV. DMV. Yeah. Uh, The uh, anywhere in that area, he couldn't make any deals. DC, Maryland, Virginia. Yeah, because he was so you know bad as an owner. And you know, I'm just happy. I'm just general. I'm just happy for the fans. I'm glad you guys. This maybe it's a new start, a fresh start, brand new, new people. And you know what? When new owners come in, they like to spend money. So, like, hopefully, you I know, mean, they, make... they also like to clear house. So, a lot yeah. of people are going to be losing their jobs. Yeah, I'll that's that's that another sad thing. Like, <laughs> a lot of people are going to be losing their. When job. it's new management, they're yeah. gonna it's gonna be they're gonna get their oh, their yeah. friends. Yes. They're, they're gonna, gonna get their presidents and their, like business. They're like, you've been running this shit how? Yeah. But um, I was watching something when they were talking about this. They say generally like NFL teams or like when new owners come in, they tend to wait like a year. 
Mm. Obviously, scout who you have. Yeah. And then go from there. And so this stadium opened and whatnot. This stadium, this stadium opened in the 1997 season and then was renovated in 2011 and 2012. It's not too um, long. So though. my so my guess is less so than thirty years. Actually, a lot of stadiums that were built in the nineties, Jaguars, for example, the Panthers, um, the command. A lot of them are actually due for redos and like re- renovations. I mean, we're thinking about it now. So many teams have renovated now. Like the Patriots are going through the Dolphins. Right um, now, Minnesota um, got a Bronco, new stadium. They're, they're doing mm-hmm. renovations currently, and it's yeah, like it, it's it's kind of that yeah. everybody and you know the new trend now is to kind of like. Not just have a stadium, but to have like a whole dish amenities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, they have like so, experience. Like, yeah, and yeah. I and I know right now, like <clears throat> DC, like the Maryland, like there's kind of nothing there. It is connected by metro, but I would imagine that like the new owner is going to want to come in, renovate the stadium, add these districts. You have the land available. It's connected by public transit. Like it's not too far from the stadium, the city itself. Like so. I know a lot of teams that built stadiums in the nineties, they're all starting to like, like if you look at some of the lowest rated stadiums, like the Browns and all this, a lot of them were built in the nineties. And now we're getting to like, these are like 30 year old stadiums. Now it's crazy to think. But, but, um, I mean, they so. should last like they're supposed to last a hundred so that, years. Well, that's, but it well, should that's last at least 50 bones. years. That's, that's crazy. Well, the bones are good. The yeah. bones are good. It's just like a new house. Like, Think about it. You're gonna to want to you buy a new, a new house, and then shit. from yeah. from then you need a new roof. You probably want to renovate the bathroom. You're gonna to want to redo yeah. the kitchen. Update, like it's put like, the new technology, so, new electronics, and shit. So okay. I know most stadiums. Like I know the like I said, the Panthers are doing a massive renovation. The Jags are looking for a massive renovation, and the bones are the the structure. The all those all those are good. It's just ripping out everything, clearing it out, and yeah. Redoing I mean, it when it, you so. think about it, how many fans do you have in attendance per game? That's just tearing trash. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, and you have for, for decades now. You have yeah. concerts and you have, you know, uh, events that hold like your fucking whatever the truck. What is that? The truck monster truck, the monster, monster truck, truck monster jam. Yeah, they do it monster here at Monster Park, actually. Now uh, that's a big thing here. Now I grew that's up going to Monster Jam. Man. Oh, you got a but, one. But yeah, let's let's also talk about the NFL because you know uh, they also you know we they've expanded kind of like how uh, we watch the shows. I think the biggest story coming out this week was uh, or this season it was about how they expanded to YouTube. Uh, YouTube TV also like the package. I think the package was what, what was like two hundred bucks, almost three hundred bucks. Expensive. It's expensive. Uh, it depends on what you get. There's like there's like three packages. Like you can get it. You get like one with YouTube TV, Sunday Ticket, and Red Zone. And then you can get yeah. just Sunday Ticket and Red Zone. And then you can get just Sunday Ticket. So like now they're trying to loop in like Red Zone as its own separate thing. And I think even the cheapest one was close to two hundred dollars if you just yeah. got Sunday Ticket. But to me, like I watch the game, and then I go straight to red zone. Like I watch yeah. the, I, like I watch the Jazz game, and I think, then I'll just go straight yeah. to red zone. Unless the other games are just so bad, but even then, I just I, red zone is perfect because it just literally bounces you around to right when the action's happening, right. and you get an idea. Who, so who, and gives let me, you the stats. Let me ask you a question. I, I, I'll go to JoJo. How, how do you like actually watch the game? Do you watch the game because I know you, uh, I know you're your Broncos fans or whatever. But also you, you kind of watch other teams, right? I know you like, uh, you know, what's Kansas City or whatever. How do you actually watch uh, when you're watching sports? When you have a day to watch it, how are you actually watching the games itself? I mean, low key for me, I'm I'm a simple guy. Uh, most of the time, I can't watch the Broncos game unless it's prime time because they'll play it on the CBS, but we're not in the right. Yeah, time we're not in their region, right? So they're you know the region. Um, usually there's two games going on at once and I'll just bounce back, whether it's CBS and what other channel, maybe Fox and I'll bounce back between, um, I never had red zone. Um, I never try to stream no multiple games at once. Um, low key, whatever's on, I'll just, if I'm available to watch, I'll just go watch it unless, you know, we're out at the bar and they have multiple games on where they have red zone and then you're able to do it that way. But if I'm at home, that's just basically what I do. So Julian, like what service, cause uh, me before I've had YouTube TV before, so I've used that service before and, uh, you know, I'm looking at, uh, the package they have. So right now it's 249 for Sunday ticket, 349, uh, if you're a non-subscriber. So it, it's kind of up there. It's, you know, it's like 300, $400 to say, uh, in the upper range, but Julian, how, how do you normally watch football on a Sunday? If you watch yeah. besides the prime, cause usually prime times are, are on really good cable. Everybody, and stuff. Yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. can watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so one, I wish Red, I wish Sunday Ticket just did a single team package only. That'd be fucking awesome. If I can just get a single team package and Red Zone, that'd be awesome. But obviously they're gonna want to upsell you and make you get all these games. 
but I really wish they'd do single team package plus red zone. I would honestly purchase that. So how I watch it, so I get a little creative with it because I'm not going to watch like Dolphins games. Like I'm just oh, unless it's boo. like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like this I, man. So, get him up so out what of I here. do get him up out because get him I have I have Paramount Plus. Um, so and most Jags games are on CBS. So what I do, I go to my computer, I put on a VPN to like Jacksonville or whatever away team they're at. Like if they're playing Atlanta or whatever, for example, I'll set my VPN to Atlanta, go to my Paramount Plus because Paramount Plus is just an extension of CBS of where you're at. So yeah. like if I, I can go on Paramount Plus on my TV, but it still knows I'm in Miami. So mm-hmm. it's going to give me the Dolphins game. It's going to give me the, the games that are set to that market. So I have to go to my computer, set my VPN to Atlanta or whatever it was Jacksonville, and then then cast it over, plug it in with the HDMI to my TV. Uh, so that's oh, pretty much yeah, I do. Yeah, Same really- thing. Pulling our fans onto some game right now. Oh, here we, 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 we I mean, that, that's what I do because yeah, I have doing Paramount. Some I, love Paramount. <laughs> I like Paramount Plus. There's a lot of stuff on there. So, and yeah, you get I all the NFL awesome games. Career. So, I just basically, and JoJo, yeah, you're a Broncos fan. So, just Yo, get I a VPN. Try that. Or I can share, I can share a VPN with you. But here's something. Yeah, I just, I just set it to that. Go to Paramount Plus and then hook up HDMI. And then after that, I put on Red Zone through some creative ways. Let's just leave it at that. In creative <laughs> ways. I, I think Red Zone is, <laughs> listen, <laughs> when we're doing fantasy football, I think Red Zone is automatic. You got to do Red Zone automatic off rip. But yeah, see, so I watch my game, and yeah. then I go to Red Zone through creative ways. And, and Julian, the way you talk about like going to another thing, the, the thing I hate about that is like you get, now you have to listen to whatever the, the local cast of whatever, the local broadcasters of that. If you're not listening on the main, if it's not a, a prime Well, NFL like doesn't CBS, have that ABC. issue. But you, you, I mean, if you just watch, you watch like a raw feed. It's just raw feed, no sound. No, like, no like in NFL, those are those are national commentators. Okay, those aren't the, local commentators. The, you know okay. that, right? Go, uh, yeah, so, like uh, you get Mark Sanchez and whoever else. Like that's see, that's who it is. But uh, I see. I like to listen to the regional feed. So I like I listen to the if Miami's playing whatever San Diego. There's a Miami feed. There's a San Diego feed. And if you fucking yeah, but the commentators VPN, are in Gabe in the NFL. Like, national still the same. Yeah, if no, it's a national game. Them. On yeah, NFL, no, it's not. Trust me, as somebody who's watched games from away teams and home, Bro. like it's the same. It's it's so they'll have the same. Not, I know Bro, MLB, Romo, look, the MLB get, network. Get, I get to choose home. I know the big time. Okay, yeah, but NFL. that's different. Be, well, it's because MLB and NBA have local market deals. They have deals with local uh-huh. markets. The NFL, those are deals with the, CBS and Fox. So those are getting broadcasted they're just okay, the pick. You're- what they're doing is just, they're just picking and choosing where the games are played but those are team like romo and Nan- uh romo and nance like they're wherever the biggest game is and they're gonna be it doesn't okay. matter the only difference and the only funny thing is like the commercials would be different that's the yeah. only thing like if i have it in like los angeles i'm gonna get like los angeles commercials but the game feed is the game feed it's the same uh-huh. feed you get in sunday ticket so i'm, I'm- Okay, I'm not talking about the national. You know, you get your Kevin Harlins and you get your Tarikos and you know. No, but that's it, what it is, yeah. Gabe. I'm telling uh, you, Mark Sanchez and all these guys try listen, like. I like are... to listen to my local feed. I want to listen to my local guys. Gabe, <laughs> okay, I, 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 I got to do my homer shit. I got to do my homer shit. Everybody roast Gabe in the comments right <laughs> Time now. Time it down because... now. Link and subscribe. Hit like Gabe. Gabe. Gabe was very. Gabe does not he know what, what he's talking, talking about. about. No, he, like, he watches he football. The commentators for Flanagan's. That's a, that's, that's how local <laughs> he wants it. He wants okay. to that's only in every other sport. Football. There's national con- All those guys hey, so, they travel around. So so legit. Like what what streaming services are you using? Because like I said, I like to use Red Zone. Red Zone to me is the ultimate, especially when I'm playing football, like uh, the fantasy football. What what streaming platforms do you prefer? Wherever I can watch it. Like I said, P- P- Paramount Plus. Um, well, I have cable too. So like I do Paramount plus to watch the games. And then outside of that, like I I watch red zone and then for the national league, I watch it on TV and then I have all the apps. So like Thursday night football, I throw on Amazon. Um, if I'm out and about or if I'm just happen to be like on Peacock and the game's on, then I'll put it on through Peacock. Um, but generally I just watch it on TV, but to me, and we could transition to this with like, now, kind of what brought us to this topic is like Peacock is now getting an exclusive playoff game on the platform. So, yeah, the playoff the ne- this year, Peacock is getting an exclusive game to themselves, not on national broadcast. And a lot of people are pissed about it. 
Oh, well, so they and have the right have to do that. You're gonna have to watch the game through Peacock only. on that Peacock playoff, only, playoff just game. like just like Amazon. So yeah, this is gonna be a playoff game, and it's but, also some regular season games. So some people who live in the boonies are pissed off and letting people know that they're pissed off because they can't get 5G. But um, I would imagine for like, I know some people were upset with the first game on Amazon last year and it was blurry, but I never really came across issues like that. And I guess if you're one of those people that live out in nowhere, and maybe NFL, you know, it reaches out. There's a lot of fans in the countryside. So it's like, I guess like those people can't get good internet services to watch it in like their 4K TV or 1080p yeah. TV. It's probably tough for them. But, like, I also feel like we're at a point where it's like, man, even if you're in the boonies, like, you can still, like, get decent enough service to, like, watch games in HD at the end of the day. At the way, like, uh, even, like, slow know. speeds out there, like, they're not even that bad. Then again, maybe it's different if you're, like, like you never Wyoming. know unless you're out there. Like, listen, if, if your service is trash, like, what, what do you – there's nothing you can do to fix it. Like, if the game is blurry, it's just ruining their experience. And if that's their experience overall, then, you yeah. know, we can't but, really- I will say that I think at the end of the day, I, I think having it on streaming platforms is probably going to end up reaching more people anyways, because at least once we started going to the streaming realm, like I can now watch games on the move now, yeah, which is like, yeah, yeah. like that sucked. Like, yeah. and who knows how many, like now you're picking up players, picking up feeds that now you're on the move or like, countless cable cutters like there's so many people honestly the only reason i have cable is because it comes with my apartment it, uh, if it didn't i wouldn't have it, it and honestly the only reason why i'm okay that i i almost felt like it was necessary for me to have it was for football yeah and was for sports but now as sports tnt needs to figure out a way to get shit on fucking streaming but <laughs> so um outside of that like you can almost you can watch everything on the apps now as long as you have it so like for me it's like Look, this is the future. Everybody's cutting cable anyway. Internet speeds are getting better for the most part throughout the country. Like, this is just the next step. And I think this is going to lead to not just Peacock being, but we might see every Sunday night game on Peacock. And we might see every game on Paramount Plus. But you already do, but like maybe solely on Paramount Plus. And and that's that's what I want to let me backtrack besides sports, because we're talking about sports streaming. Like me personally, when I watch stream, like I, like I said, I used to use YouTube uh, just because locally I could watch the games locally whenever I was out and about. But I I, I kind of dropped that. Me in general, for as far as streaming, I use streaming for movies and shows. Right? I have Disney, I have Amazon, I have Hulu, which Disney Hulu is kind of the same kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, they're in a package. Dude. I don't really use Paramount, so the fact that they're going to Paramount, that's gonna be tough for me because like. Am I gonna really download the app and like if they have a trial? Maybe I, if I need to watch a playoff game, maybe I'll download it. But that's not really what I mainly use it for. The streaming I use is for my entertainment. Like the streaming has substituted the cable, right? For like I said, TV shows, movies is what I mainly use for the streaming. Jojo, I don't know how you how, how you you watch your shows. I know you know Julian's. He, he's more on the ESPN app. He watches soccer. He can watch uh, UFC. He can watch it. You know whatever. I have there, all but, of them because almost everything I watch. Yeah, like Peacock yeah. has. But then again, um, like, but then again, each, ES- each platform has their own sports. It gets but, crazy. But I was saying, then again, ESPN, Hulu, Disney is the same shit. These are like all three like tangled in. I know they have packages yeah. for all three yeah, of them. Yeah. But Jojo, like well, how I do get... you, are you using sports? Like uh are you using streaming to watch live sports or is the use for other stuff? Well, I mean, you guys know I'm a baseball guy, so fortunate enough we got T Mobile Tuesday and we got free MLB season. So I, honestly, most of the time I'm on the MLB app and when the Yankee game is on, whether I'm on the move yeah. or if I'm at home, I just pop it right open and stream the game uh nfl nba i mean nba cable right a lot of games are either on espn or or tnt and uh i know they have the apps i do have the app for both um because sometimes i don't know why they wouldn't can you stream tnt yeah i think there's a tnt app and you can watch the basketball games on there as well so i will say with tnt and we're already starting to so like couple months ago or a month ago or something like that um the u.s men's national team for sorry, signed a deal with hbo and like turner sports which is which is tnt um so they air games on tnt and hbo max so i think eventually nba on tnt is eventually gonna go to hbo max because they're already starting i've watched a couple games on there it's kind of interesting it's kind of weird to watch a game on hbo max but i think tnt 
needs to get their shit together and have it like simultaneously stream on HBO Max because I would rather I wish they had that instead of having have a separate TNT app. It's like, all right, you just go to HBO. Yeah. That's the one thing. It's like so many apps. Like I don't even think my TV has the TNT app. I have to use so, my fire stick to do that. So real quick, go back to the original question. Like, does anybody here have Paramount? Because I don't have Paramount. So I, was I, I, don't watch Paramount. I, I do have Paramount, but strictly for like show purposes, not really yeah. for sports. Now they're integrating sports into it. Um, Like, you know, Julian was mentioning as well, but like there's certain shows I like to watch Um, or even, you know, like, I don't know if you guys watch the challenge or anything like that, but that's pretty dope. They, they host new seasons on Paramount. Um, I have Apple TV. I have pretty much every app. I have Peacock. Uh, I, I have some money. I, I, I got in eventually. I, I, was, I was trying to avoid it. I was trying to avoid it. But, you know, I, I'm home a lot. I like and, my time at home. And there's these shows that trend. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to tell you how I have all the accounts, but I'm signed in on yeah, we, we, we at got, the end of the day, <laughs> friends and friends, it's friends and family. It's cheaper, anyways. <laughs> like I was talking to my mom. My mom still has cable. She's paying like two hundred fifty dollars a month for that shit yeah, for fuck. cable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like now with these apps, are, so it's like to me, it's like all right, whatever. No, at the end of the day, it's still cheaper than what I'm paying. So I pretty much there's an app for everything I watch. So like Peacock, I watch a lot of racing, and they have the Premier League on there. Paramount, um, I watch it for shows, but like as for sports, it has the Champions League. It has a uh, so I watch it for the Champions League, and then Apple, I watch it for MLS and baseball, and then I have the ESPN app, which is pretty much everything else. And now HBO is now starting to have, like like I said, the U.S. men's team and probably eventually TNT. So I pretty much – the only thing that's really lacking that I can't watch that I feel like I have to put on TV is, like, one of the local games, like, in the during the regular season, like that Bailey's thing. But I heard you can get, like, the Bailey's app and do that as well. Um, I never done it, but um, but oh yeah, and yeah, Peacock for like and a Sunday Night Football as well. But I mean, for me, the only one that I'm really missing is TNT. Like I can watch pretty much everything now, honestly. Yeah, and and you know uh, when it comes, especially now that now that we're in the playoffs, we're talking about NBA. I'll even watch Fox too. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I for the playoffs and like big major sports, I'm not gonna rely on pair. Like I don't think I'm gonna download paramount to watch a playoff game like i'd just rather wait i'll see it on youtube and watch the game results whatever i i kind of rely on the, those major tnt abc cbs fox whatever the major cable channels that's kind of what i rely on whether i'm going out or i'm at home uh you know watching at a bar or something uh that's kind of what i rely on I, I don't think uh you know as far as what we're talking about the conversation of the nfl paramount and the playoffs I don't, I don't know. It, it 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 depends on it depends on if uh, if it's a, a game I care about or if it's a team I care about. If the Dolphins are on there, then you know I'll consider it. But it's, in general, it doesn't match up with like uh, c- kind of what I regularly uh, use for streaming in general. I don't know. So uh, that's so let's what so do you think this is the start of more more games to come now that we have this is gonna be the first I mean game exclusively online. Is this going to be more to come? Are you going to see start seeing? They're going to try it out. Like I said, they're going to try it out, and depending, I don't know what game they have, but yeah. de- depending yeah. on what they get and the ratings they have, yeah, obviously when you on the results for sure, they're going to be monitoring. It, obviously, it's all electronic. They're going to be monitoring the streaming, who's downloading, how many views do we get? Does it beat TV? Because if it doesn't beat TV, or they're not getting the amount of views, you know, for the advertising they're going to put on there, then they'd be like, "This is not worth it. Monetarily, this is not worth it." Uh, so here's one thing though, and this is how I have Peacock. So when you have Xfinity, it comes with Peacock. So a lot of people already have access to it. It's just a matter of setting it up. So but, that might actually. But so Xfinity might be, you know, it might be locally in Florida. But where does Xfinity expand? Like I, I would like to know Xfinity where they expand is everywhere in the country. Like all over nationally known. Yeah, do Comcast? Yeah, Montana. What are you about, Gabe? It's Comcast. Montana. They're like the number. They're like the number one internet provider in the country. Like okay. it's. Well, like, uh, it, it, <laughs> then I don't know. Maybe in his region of Texas, he yeah, he doesn't see Comcast. Yeah, gotta, Gabe's got some no name <laughs> shit that we've never heard. Of. Listen, man, Texas is weird. We got weird. Listen, There's like pop- one thing. Like Comcast is those ones where it's like Comcast is that one company where it's like. There's nothing else, and like, oh, I have to get fucking comments. Yeah, it's yeah. the only. Yeah, they're they're that one. Like, it's like if you live out in the country, I guarantee you, you can get Comcast, but you can't get shit else. You can't get no AT and T, can't get uh, Verizon or whatever. Like, you gotta get Comcast. Yeah, 
Well, we'll see, man. Texas is weird. My power went out weird uh, last night. The, the <laughs> power grid is all crazy. The internet went out. Anyways, uh, l- l- can we t- just transition right now? We're in the middle of a lot of playoffs. Can we talk about the NHL real quick? Because I see Julian, you're wearing you're wearing the Panthers hat. So you've been watching. Have you been watching the Panthers? Can surviving, we talk about the game Panthers? Show surviving Bro, Panther. I've been wearing nah. the shirt. I had to show it out real quick. You can't see I'm you're from I'm from the neck up, but you can't see it and for the visual listeners where Yeah, uh, my, and for the people uh like yeah. when we first came in, Gabe had his thing his camera so low so people could see his shirt. I have to show yeah, it off. His, head, show his off. head was cut off. We're vibing today. Okay, listen. It's NHL playoffs, game one. We're we're in the East I wanna say ECF, it's not the ECF. Whatever. We're in the we're in a final for a conference final. It is final. the ECF. Uh, yeah, I mean Easter Conference final, right? Yeah. For for the Panthers, Panthers have been listen. We're playing with house money. We beat the fucking Bruins in seven games. We went and we gentlemen sweep uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now we're playing the Carolina Carolina Pan. Uh, the, excuse me, the Carolina Hurricanes. Carolina Panthers. I want to say Panthers because the NFL. We just talked about NFL. I'm sorry. Excuse my brain for not switching. Carolina Hurricanes. It's a tough team. Very defensive team. They play very well. One of the most historic game. Game one, Julian. You watch this game until you you got to tell your story of how you watch this game because this game went to four overtimes. Jojo, I know you had no fucking clue of what what happened. J- Julian, t- t- tell us about game Not- one versus the Hurricanes. So man, I hopped in in the second period. Third OT, you hopped in. <laughs> no, the second period. I hopped in the second period and then I dipped the second overtime. I just, I, I, it was getting way too late. We're over here on the East Coast. Gabe's in Central Time, so he had an extra hour ahead of me. Like, I was just like, bro, screw it. It's game one. I'll wa-. If it was game seven, then I'm like, all right, I got to stay up. But it's like, yeah. it's game one. I'm like, all right, I just got to let it pass. Like, I, I let it go. But, yeah, I mean, it was it was a tough game. I mean, it was 2-2 forever. Like, yeah. there was no goal score. Like, they scored – uh, when did they score two two? When did I know they, I know Carolina. At least Carolina when I went up first. In, yeah, I know. At least when I hopped in, it was two two, and pretty much stayed that way the entire time. I saw no goals, pretty much the the moment I watched, and I pretty much watched the whole game at that point and saw nothing. But I mean, I don't know. Me and Gabe were briefly talking about this leading into this, but like, I'm a guy where I'm like, I want the shootout, man. Like, oh, okay. look, there we go. And me and Gabe, me and Gabe had a before jo- discussion jo- before about post the postseason. Uh, how do you determine a game winner in the postseason? That's that's the discussion we were having earlier. We we had a thing. Go, Julian, go off. Give your rant. And so I- before we <laughs> hop over to that, but um, huge win for the Panthers, nonetheless. My boy Bob got sixty Bobrovsky. saves, 60, 62 saves this game. I think it was the most saves in playoffs ever. Um, Huge, huge game, and even for the the Panthers, the Carolinas goalie got like fifty seven saves. It was insane. It was it was pretty insane. Like I can't imagine how exhausted those guys are, and that kind of leads to my first point. It's like, man, one okay with the shootout. I like the shootout. I feel like, look, if you can't get it done in a game with, in regulation, and then you, and you can't get it done in regulation, and then you get two extra overtimes and you still can't get it done in a physical game like hockey that requires like you're, you're putting at risk of injuries and other things. Look, if you can't get it done, then you don't deserve to keep on going. This is going to a shootout. But, like but, This is a shootout and we're going to go to a shootout. Like if you can't get it done, then too bad. You couldn't get it done in regulation. That's your fault. Now you got, now you have to test your luck into like some people like to say with shootouts is luck, but it's not. You got to go then test your luck into the shootout. And to me, that's just how it has to be, especially in a game in a sport where you have seven game series in a very physical sport. Like you can't be running on for so damn long. And I know they're going to be starting up again um, today. It's game two today. Um, so also just huge victory for the Panthers nonetheless. Um, and I'm glad they got that, that one Oh victory, but Gabe rebuttal my thoughts on the shootout. Jojo. First, I want to talk about this. Listen, your boy is a soccer fan. So they play, you know, regulation. And then like, I I understand that. They play 20 minutes and they're like, Oh, it's still a tie. It's like, okay, we're still tying. So everybody's a tie. You pay extra 30 minutes. 
Listen. Okay. Correct me if you want. Whatever. Whatever, soccer boy. You still get extra time. (laughs) Anyways, listen. It's playoff time. Right, JoJo? It's playoff time. We need to determine a winner. Right? We played a whole regular season. We played 100 games before this. Also, what what was the time of the game? Five hours in like 14 Bro, minutes. They, or five they, hours. They essentially played five hours. They played two and a third games of of hockey. You know what I mean, yesterday, two and a third yeah. games of hockey. Almost. You know what I mean, like it could have been two and three games. It's an, they played a what a hundred. Listen, that's a flight to L.A. That's a flight from Yo, Miami to L.A. How many How many Lord of the Rings movies could you watch? They played. They played hundred. hundred and fifty <laughs> game minutes. Hundred and fifty game minutes. That's Listen, insane. Man. No, I could, more I than that. No, the more than that. Way more than that. During that time. Yeah, my bad. My math is all fucked up. Oh. Listen, the, you do the math. Listen, Jojo. When it comes playoff time, we need to determine a winner. Okay, Th- these these shootouts. You know, sh- shootouts essentially in Julian's in his world is like penalty kicks. It's like, yo, we play for a certain amount of time, and then we need to do a penalty. Kick. I don't want a penalty kick, man. That, that's just so lucky. I need teams going hard. So. Jojo, if you don't know, during the well, regular first off, season, hockey shootouts are a little different. During the it's regular a little season, more during the regular season, right? You, you got to play a hundred games. So during the regular season, uh, when they go to overtime, they they would do three on three. So normally hockey is five on five, but once they go into overtime, they do three on three just to make it. You know, they make more space, right? Because uh, yeah. you can't change the field, but you can change the amount of players. So they make it more space, so like uh, more action can happen and, and stuff so can happen they quicker. Take people off the ice. And over yes, during the regular season. By the way, it is 140 minutes of game time during the regular season. But in the postseason, they go five on five, which is regular regulation. Got it. it. And that's that's what I feel like it should be. Right? It's just like baseball. To me, it's like baseball. It's like yo, it's not baseball though. In playoff baseball, if the score is zero zero, we have to play to determine who wins. You get a chance to bat. They get a chance to bat. You know what I mean? Uh, We we even it up. So uh, once you go into extra overtimes, it's oh, like what? What does baseball do when you get into extra endings? What do they do? Don't well, they do now, something different? Now, now it's, they, now they it's different. On second. I'm talking about now. old school. I'm talking about they, old school. They put a man on second, but still. Oh, I mean, so now you want to talk about old school? Hold on, but listen, Gabe talks about NHL. You're talking about modern. But it still doesn't so guarantee now. a run. Like you can have three strikeouts, and then yeah, that a shootout doesn't guarantee a like, loss. But why would you? Why would you listen when you're playing with a tough team? These teams, these rosters, you have like four, uh, four Gabe, lines. You can't compare baseball to a sport that's more. It's not a physical sport like we're hockey talking about is. the playoffs. All right, let me hear. Playoffs. Let me finish. Uh, let let Gabe finish his point. All right, so you got five and five. Listen, OT, five and five OT. I feel like you're just extending the time, right? Because it's a, it's a sudden death. Goal. Whoever scores first, after you know, once you get to OTs, whoever scores first. Wins, and oh, I feel like so they just have to score one. It's not battling throughout the whole time. No, no, it's not really like you down. get the ball, I get the ball. It's not, so it's, it's, it's like, sudden death. It's sudden death. Yeah, it's sudden death, <clears throat> and you're five on five, just like regular game. I feel like hockey probably does it best. It's like, yo, we have regulation time. If y'all can't score within that, it's like whoever can score the first. Whoever wins. scores first, yeah. Yeah, whoever scores first. Wins. But isn't that kind of what NFL is doing right now too? Right? Yeah, because like well, possession, and then uh, no, not really. Kind of because because if you if you end the, the regulation, there, there's one no person, setup. Yeah, one person gets the ball, the other person gets the ball, and if you score, and then that's it. If it's so a weird rule. Yeah. Okay, all right, not to go back to that. Okay, sudden death but, in hockey, and, and but. Play. I, f- I feel like that is the essence of the sport, right? The sport is like, yo, we need to determine a winner. It's not like, oh, uh, let's do the penalty uh, uh, to shootouts or like in Julian's world will be penalty kicks. It's like we need to do a shootout yeah, because I'm about shootout. whoever can, kick the, whoever can, whoever can kick the best hockey. whoever can kick the best after uh, 90 minutes will be the winner. Of, it's like, no. It's like, yo, let's play the sport. How it's supposed to be played. Five on five. Whoever scores wins. That's it. That's it. All right, we're, we're going to get into NBA shit as well because we got to talk about that later. But I feel like that's the most authentic the sport can be. It's like, yo, we have a regulation time. If you don't win within this time, whoever scores first wins. I don't know. You know, Julian can combat that however you want to combat that. All right, so look, look, one, I don't really disagree with that. But Julian, I do want to hear your point as well. So in this shootout scenario, right, is it going to do you, do you plan it on being like soccer, right, where you have five people you know, trying to score, and then they go on the other end. Whoever's the best of five. And then the five, try well, to first score. First off, what, and then what Gabe's score, not. Or is it kind of like a one-off? Like, you go back and forth yeah. until someone scores. No, what it is, and what Gabe's feeling, shootout is something they've done 
I think for almost 20 years now, they got rid in the of regular it, season. They brought it, but that, but then they brought it back. <clears throat> so to me, I think, look, you've played three periods. You've had two overtimes. Like you've had plenty of time. You can't get it done. Go to shootouts. That's just to me. I just feel like that's just the proper way to go. And how what shootouts if worked. What if they're like shootouts then? You just keep going. You do score what? shootouts. That's what it is. Hey. What shootouts is so shootouts can go as long as it takes. So you, one team goes, and also with shootouts, you start from the middle, and you. Bre- it's not like hockey where you just. It's not like soccer where you, Gabe wants to bring up so much, where it's just setting up in the middle, and then you just got to shoot. This is in hockey shootouts. The guy takes the puck from mid ice, brings it down, and then the goalie can set up however he wants as he's coming at him. It's a pretty fair kind of way of approach. And then you just keep on going. It's like a, uh, it, you just keep on going, and then until whoever misses, and then the other person gets their turn, and they and they make it, then that team okay. wins. So now, what if this also drags the time and no one scores, and then time is still of the essence? Also, it will never take as long. At the end of the day, it's shootouts. It doesn't take that long to perform, and also too, you're, you're looking at a very physical game. And to run it for five hours, this isn't baseball, dude. Like, you're not just standing out there. Like, this is a sport where you got to play a seven-game series where you're getting fucking reamed constantly, <laughs> like, in the middle of the night. Like, Here's my problem with that whole thesis. Hockey is okay. a team sport, right? You have five players, you have the goalie, right? Every five team, every it's sport a team is a team sport, sport Gabe. There's all okay. team sports. So... It's about the team effort. It's about the defense and the offense all together on the same ice, whatever. And they're all doing a shootout. When you do a shootout, it's one-on-one. It's the shooter and the goalie. One-on-one. The the sport of hockey is a team sport. That's why I like, I prefer. Every player I prefer to have five-on-five and shoot it out. You know I mean? Five-on-five, sudden death, because you have the whole team. It's the team against the team. It's, it's like, how, how how well do you play defense? How well do you press? How well do you recover? How well do you uh, we had get that turnovers? Time. The Come shit's on. over, though. Here's the like, thing. And then, I feel like and then also, shootout. every player every player has to mm-hmm. do the shootout. It's not like it's just the attackers doing the shootout. It's the Defenders first five. Every, and soccer it's a part the first five. Well, it's a part I, of the yeah. team. Like, yeah, and there's only five people on the ice. So that means you're going to have defenders. You're going to have attackers shooting it. Like, you're going to have, uh, like, it's just what it is. Like, if it's a team sport, then you guys have to work together as a team to get through this shootout. You have to have trust into each other. And they, it's all a team sport. And if your team couldn't get it done, you couldn't get it done in five right, look, periods. So look, for the fans listening and watching, right, we're going to put up a poll or we'd like to see your comments and whether you agree with Gabe or Julian's side to settle this in overtime for hockey so we can move on with this episode. All right. uh, we'd definitely love Jojo, to hear what do you think, that. though? Okay, look, man, you know me. I'm kind of I'm – kinda, it's hard for me to change in sports, right? I always have the argument with Julian. Um I can see both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and comment and, you know, and I'm going to put a poll up for our fans. And I'll, okay, I'll he's going to ride the fence. He's going to ride the fence. <laughs> Let's transition because he's going to ride the fence. He's, he's, you know what I mean? Anyway, it's a great. Sides, listen, 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 we're room for the pressure. I do. I, think, I, do I, I do. I think we're a South Florida the pressure, team. man. Pressure but, of a shootout. I mean, good, good arguments. Both good, great arguments. I mean, you know, I. I, I don't like going against the grain. I like to keep the change in the sport until it actually happens. And I don't really like soccer. So I'm probably going to disagree with Julian based off bias because I don't. I don't it has really nothing like... to do with soccer, though. This is Yo, a shootout you have a soccer soccer forever you have a soccer and hockey. Too. Come on, come on. But you it's just what game. hockey has done. You're for used a long to that time. type of game. You're used to that type of game, <laughs> but not not in hockey. Whatever. Hey, that's Let's what try. hockey's done. I don't know why you make it out to be like this. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> what we got? What we got? Let's talk about other playoffs. By the way, shout out to the Panthers. I'm rooting for them. Game two, they're playing tonight, so we don't know the result. By the time this comes out. We don't know the result. There probably be some other games being played, but I'm rooting for the Panthers. Do they have uh, home ice or no? No, 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 no. They're, they're they're away. They're still away. Oh, They'll so come. they won that first game on the road. Oh, yeah, okay. they stole one. They're looking good, man. Hey, listen. I don't know, I'll... Julian. We might have to pull up to game three. Hey, it's right there. It's right in Broward County. All right, let's talk about some other playoffs. NBA is going crazy right now. We're in the Eastern Conference play, uh, Eastern Conference Finals, Western Conference Finals. Let's talk about the Western Conference because. Uh, Jojo, you are our resident Lakers fan. You want to say you're a LeBron fan. You're a Lakers fan. I Listen, you're a Lakers fan. Okay? So I, I know you've been watching the games. Uh, and these, are, these have been two really good teams. 
Honestly, I don't. I, I feel like going into the playoffs, we didn't give Nuggets love. Like I remember talking about like all our predictions were, and I was like, damn, nobody's giving Nuggets love. I was like, yeah. Nuggets have been good all season. They're a quiet number one seed, right? We yeah. know their dominance, but like we didn't give them the respect that the, the playoff respect. There's a different yeah. level of respect, right? Yeah. You have regular season success and then playoff success, right? But yeah. and I, and I feel like the Lakers have been the hottest team. Going into the playoffs, right? As far as, like, expectations, and now their players are getting healthy and playing as a cohesive team. Um, But, you know, as of the results, as of today, Saturday, as we record this, the Lakers are down 2-0. So let's talk about Game 1, how you felt about it, because they're they're in Denver. Lakers are at Denver. Game 1, and let's let's talk about the Game 2 results. Like, as far as, like, how have you seen the team overall uh, in these last two performances? Yeah, man. uh, Game 1 was exactly what i expected but it's not what i wanted because i already i already knew it was going to be adjustment for the lakers going to mile high uh adjusting to the altitude and they're playing denver nuggets who had the best home record all season i think they lost seven home games all season and they haven't lost one home game yet in the playoffs like yeah denver is 34 and seven at home seven that's that's ridiculous right and lakers on the road they just had a tough series against you know the Warriors chasing them all around even though they won in six but it's a completely different team different coaching um it is a rematch to the 2020 bubble but Denver is on a different tear this year right they they have a healthy squad Michael Porter Jr. Murray uh Jokic you know two-time MVP now I'm thinking maybe he should have won three times I don't know but I'll leave that up for you guys to debate um and the first thing I said like I was just at home watching the game And I knew it could happen quick. I was like, listen, just don't get blown out in the first two quarters. Keep it close. Just just keep it close. You guys have a chance. Like, play your game. What the hell happens? They go down, like, 15, then get down 20, and then it's a tell of two halves, right? They made the necessary adjustments and actually came pretty close to winning the game. But overall, like, it was just not a good look. Their transition defense is terrible. And Jokic, you got your whatever, almost seven-foot center pushing the ball up the court every single play, setting up his team. Got Porter in the corner for three. You got Murray. You got, like, it's it's insane. Or he could take the jump shot. He's setting up in the post. Um, they just look really good. They were well-coached, and, you know, they play with fundamentals, and they play with, you know, good passing, tempo, and they're going to make the Lakers run, especially they have to adjust to the altitude. Um, their breathing's not going to be the same. Whereas, you know, Denver, they play there all year long and they use that to their advantage in that game one. Yeah. And I mean, that game was pretty crazy. I think the biggest highlight from game one was like, uh, Yoke is shooting over Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis being a big tall. He's finally healthy. We finally see him like progress, like in the playoffs, like we need a, a healthy Anthony Davis, like, uh, yeah. shooting like he did, like, uh, and the bubble and, you know. You can't stop Jokic. Jokic, yeah. listen, I, I agree with you, Jojo. Jokic probably should have won for a third year. I don't give a damn about writers fatigue, whoever, voters fatigue, whatever. He, I, I, I um, you know, I agree that uh, Embiid was out there, but to me, Jokic was the obvious favorite. Like, listen, he's not, you know, laterally, he's, he's not, not the big, flashy, you know. He's not flashy. Uh, and, and Julian, you could talk about this earlier, like how, how you watched him playing, like, in general, yeah, I was, was me and Gabe were talking oh, about this like watch, before man. we came on, and it's just like he's playing straight Euro ball out there. Like you look at him, just like the way he's thinking and moving the ball and maneuvering and distributing it, like it's it's different. Like it's just it's different, and it's obviously working for the Nuggets. And you have these players that can help supplement that with players like Murray and so just shooting from deep. And like, man, there was a I know we're talking about game one, but there was a one pass in game two where I don't know how. He even saw that and how. Oh, uh, he's, a good he's a good passer too. He's a good passer. I don't know. I don't know how he saw it, and then I don't know how the other guy grabbed it. He like one hand caught it and then went up for a layup. It was, it was, it was insane. It was something that probably nobody will talk about, but it's just like little things like that and having that vision is just like to me just pure Euro ball and like yeah. it's just dominating the way he's he's playing because he's taking a different approach to. It. He's not just trying to back somebody down, which he can, but you have to worry about not just backing him down, but like the moment you try to close him in on two players, he's going to out it, send it out to the open man. And you yeah, might not even realize he's always finding the open guy or the best option, which is crazy. And that's, and that's, and that's, that's Euro ball. His numbers, his numbers rack up. 
Yo, Yo he look, averages you'll have, crazy. You'll have 11 rebounds out of nowhere, 10 assists. So here's points. his stats like, where from did, game where one. Did you get these 27 points, like 27 no. quiet points, right? A mix of little floaters, you know, turning to the basket, a three pointer here and there, like a few mid ranges, and you're like, like all right, game, like man has a 30 piece on us. Like, how how did this happen? Game one, he had 14 assists as a center. Yeah, as a Yo, center, and he and Murray, the point guard, had five. Jamal Murray had five. <laughs> like, it's crazy. And and the thing with the Nuggets, too, is, like, anybody can score on that team. Like, I'm looking at the box scores now. It's, like, Aaron Gordon, 12 points. Porter yeah. Jr., 15 points. Jochik's 34 points. Murray, 31. Uh, Codwell, 21. And then off the bench, oh, Brown, oh, 16. But then you look at the Lakers, it's 40 points Davis, 26 LeBron. And then it's it's six versus uh, Schroeder. And then Russell, eight. Like, and then Reeves got 23, but outside of that, that's that's it. Like it was three players that were scoring points on that team. Yeah. yeah you look I mean, at the Nuggets. The thing is that like, Nuggets, I feel like I know it's gonna sound crazy to say, like they do have better supporting cast, or like their starters are better than our starters, right? Um, I I'll, I will give credit to the Lakers bench. Who who they have yeah, been showing up? That's they what I'm saying. Yeah. Like if you're so, watching so um, in this game, like, Hachimura had yeah. 17 well, points, but outside yeah. of that, he's been going off. Outside he's of been that, good for them. He's, he's been good for them. He's been the only bench player that's been showing anything these past. Well, two game games. two, I think there was like two or three bench players in double digits. Um, no, only Schroeder had four, and Walker the fourth had two, and then Hachimura had 21. He's the only one scoring off the yeah, bench. I think he was leading the Lakers that second game. But well, anywho. That first game, right, um, it was closer than what we it should have been, right? Because the Lakers actually played really well. I said their transition defense, that's what it was. That's why Nuggets came out to a big lead. And Lakers came in close uh, towards the end to actually try to close that out. Moving on to game two, that was a much even uh, closer game, right? So they were going back yeah. and forth. Lakers had a little bit of a lead. And then your boy Jamal Murray wanted to was go. going MJ, <laughs> he wanted to go Michael Jordan and just hitting clutch shot after clutch shot. And then your boy LeBron, sad to say, he kind of sold for the team. He sold turnovers at the end, couple missed layups. He had that missed dunk attempt. Wash and- King, Wash King. Listen, man, the age, showed, <laughs> the age showed a little bit, but he can't be perfect every game, right? But, you know, obviously he's going to own up to that. And granted, I do feel like we still have hope in this series because, one, we're playing against the team with the best home record in the playoffs. That's why it's a game. It's a seri- seven-game series. Back then, mm-hmm. early 2000s, this was normal. Teams would go down 2-0 to the top-seeded team. Me and JoJo were talking that, about this regular, last week that, or something. That's normal. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We're that's used not- to these upsets with these lower seed teams now, which is amazing. Winning a game on the road. Like, that's not supposed to happen. It's been happening as of late. But now Lakers are going to go home and have two games. And obviously, those are must win games, right? Now, if, you know, so that's where I stand. Yeah, me and JoJo were talking about this weekend where it's like, we remember like game seven series literally going to where it was just whoever had home court advantage because. Home team would have won, then they go away, they would lose. Like, I remember that like vividly. That would always happen. And if you got a road victory, like that was a huge, yeah. huge deal. And I feel like, like I said, going into the series, I feel like the Lakers had the hotter team. But if you want to talk about a complete team playing well, I mean the yeah. Nuggets, you, you can't you can't deny uh them complaining, uh playing as a whole. Um but yeah, I, I wanna, you know. It ain't the series don't start until an away team wins a game. So you know the Lakers are going home right now. They're gonna play two games at home. You got you got to secure home court. uh, As far as I'm concerned, Um, it maybe they should have. I felt like they should have split, but that was a goal to split. At least game two, that was theirs. Game two was their game to win. They had the thing was with the Nuggets is they just they went on these streaks and these runs that were just. Yeah, on like it, it, was, happens, it was hard to catch like, up. It happens just like that. Like they can push the ball so quick up the. Dude, court. there was a moment they made like four straight threes in a row. It was just like in like a minute. It was Man, insane. It was, Lakers need to get back because let's say they take and I and I was watching the game. I get so upset when they get out of rhythm and they take a bad shot. I already know the Nuggets are going to score on the other end. No I can, man, D. Russell. Them. They're forcing a three. D. Um, Russell. Like, yo, rebound <laughs> down. 
they don't get back, and that missed three turns into a Nuggets basket, and it's happened every single time. That's where they score their points. Yeah. That's, that's literally how they, they get their leads and their hot streaks, right? They might come down two layups, and then boom, two three-pointers, 10-point swing. Now you're down 10 in like two minutes. It's like let the Lakers shoot. You're like forcing, yeah, shoot. you're like forcing up shots. It's just crazy. I'm like yeah. that can't happen. But but I would say Lakers have hit some timely shots, just like the Miami Heat last night. Um, where those timely shots when someone's going on a run, you need a quick jump shot, you need a layup, you know, to stop that. But a little back and forth, man. But that transition defense, they need to fix that hundred percent because and Jamal up well against Jokic. You know, LeBron's been playing defense on Jokic. Uh, even uh, Hachimura has been playing defense on, on yeah. Jokic, which has worked, right? Yeah. But, you know, you got to worry about, you know, once you have him locked up, what's going on with all the other role players? Caldwell Pope shooting threes. Porter's a sniper. Yes. And then <laughs> Jamal Murray, 23 points in the fourth quarter. And he did nothing. He had no answer. The first half of the game. He did nothing. <laughs> he did nothing. He did nothing. <laughs> and this guy is more ham. I'm like, what is going oh, on? Oh, yeah, 37 <laughs> for the whole game. So, it's crazy. I don't so, know how much he got in the third quarter. We'll see tonight. As we, Like I said, as we record this, is Saturday. The Nuggets play at the Lakers. So hopefully uh, L.A. will defend home court tonight. But let's talk about the other team on the East Coast. Did you let's guys want to do predictions for this? The this LA series? Game real quick? This series yeah. real quick. Do you have, do you have like uh, the, the Listen, do you have the well already, not for the odds. We we can do the whole thing at the end once we go. You already over the know game, you already know who I'm picking. It's not how many surprise. games. I so read yeah. the, I read the I, script and LeBron's getting fired. He read this. I'm telling you guys. That's why I'm like, don't panic. <laughs> don't panic. I told I mean, you. People didn't even fan. think LA was, LA was LA. even going to make it this far, and some people were. I mean, like, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, no one expected them to get by the Warriors. Like, come on, bro. Like, yeah. I think uh, Nuggets in five. I think I they mean, sneak one away from LA and then they come back home. And that is a possibility. That, it, that is a possibility. They're, they're going to take. They're going to actually. I don't even think they're going to sneak it. They're going to take one away and then like they're going to win at home in Game Five. As much as I like the Lakers going into the series, like I, a I don't like the Lakers because this is LA LA fans or whatever. Um, I felt like the LA Lakers were the hottest team, but right now you're going down going down two and zero. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Were they the hottest team, or just no one wanted to talk about? They the just Nuggets? got high at the right time. You gotta get it high at the right <laughs> I time. I mean, look, yeah, healthy. They had people. the play in. You know, they beat the Memphis number two seed in the first round. They beat the defending champs in the second round. Like, you gotta give them some credit. I give them some credit, Listen. but like at the end of the day, the Nuggets. I mean, they've been dominating. What was their series? In I the mean, last, that's true too. Last two series. Listen, as far as my prediction, I'm gonna go. Listen, must win for LA. Facts. It's tough for it's tough with the Nuggets being up. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Nuggets and six. I'm gonna go Nuggets and six. Maybe LA pulls out a couple games. I'm gonna go Nuggets. So Nuggets, nuggets went, and six. Nuggets one in five I, I, in round. I haven't respected. I haven't respected the Nuggets at all this entire postseason. Lakers in seven. Respect. Wow. Okay. Lakers in seven. Here we go. I think Nuggets right. in five. So we all, all got right. different. <laughs> let's travel. Let's travel east because there's another team playing on the East Coast. You got the Boston Celtics with the Miami Heat. Obviously, Boston Celtics going in. They've been they've been huge favorites going in since the beginning of the season, uh, mid season, at the beginning of the playoffs. We always talked about it was Boston Celtics or the Milwaukee Bucks. Miami plows through the Bucks in five games, Heat in five. We plow through the Knicks. Which, by, by the way, Jojo, you need to apologize for your fucking Knicks take. You're talking about <laughs> Heat. You need to apologize for your Knicks take. The disrespect. Uh, uh, and now we're you know we're facing the the Boston Celtics. They took away two games from the Boston Celtics. Let's talk about this uh, game, this Heat series, the Heat series versus the uh, Boston Celtics. I mean, we're Heat fans. You guys are wearing the fucking jersey, so yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Julian first right. as far as like the games you've seen and and uh, what your takeaways from the series is so far. So I didn't see game one, but I watched game two and I watched the highlights. I watched part of game two and then I watched the whole thing, the whole highlights today. Um, from what I got from game one, it was a lot of just like runs. It was like the Celtics would go on a run. Then they would let the Heat like kind of come back. And then the Celtics would go on a run again. But then they would let the Heat come back. Then the Celtics kind of like – it was kind of forcing the lead a lot of the times. I felt like – I don't know if it, what the stats back it up, but I felt like the Celtics had the lead for most of the game. But then as, as soon as they had a decent gap, they would let the Heat come right back and close it. 
And then eventually just got to the end with like a few minutes left to where the heat just, they, they caught up, but then they just didn't stop. And then they eventually just hopped over the Celtics and won it. And I felt like throughout the game, like I felt like the Celtics were just letting the heat go to the paint. Like at least a lot of the highlights that I was watching and a lot of the pieces of the game that I watched, like they were just, no one was trying to contest anything when bam or like Jimmy or whoever was just running into the paint. Like, I felt like they just had like, it was so soft. Like there were no one was trying versus when you look at the other end, I felt like Miami was pretty solid defensively when it came to like inside the paint. And that to me, I think that's what ended up making and breaking the game. Obviously yeah, everybody yeah. wanted to look at the big, big shots from deep, but I think those little points, those points matter. Yeah. And that ended up, I mean, those little points is what kept on bringing them back. You know, say, obviously yeah. everyone says it's a shooter league, but when Jimmy goes to the paint. The key thing is that he finishes. He makes the layup and that stops them from going to the other end with some transition offense. So it slows everything down. It's either he's getting fouled or he's making the floater, making the layup. He's and stopping the game. Bro, yeah. That's a huge game changer. Like, li- that's literally what he's doing. I mean, listen. As Bam far as like game too, he had a really good game. Yeah. He was making everything. As far as going to the series, like, listen, the Heat going to the series, nobody predicted them to get out of out of the Buck series. Like nobody predicted. Even me. Listen, I was very tough. I was like, yo, it's gonna be very tough. We got out of the Buck series. Once I saw the Knicks, I'm like, yo. This is going to be, this is cake. This is nothing. Okay, this is nothing. Jojo, you still haven't apologized, but that's okay. Um, so now once we face the Celtics, this is like the last the the last boss, the last bottle, uh, battle boss, whatever. Um, and so far, they haven't shown up. Like, whenever the Heat go down, because I've seen this so many times during the entire season, they go down 9 points. They go down 12 points. They go down 20 points. At the half, I'm not worried at all. I'm not worried why. You know why? Because we got fucking Jimmy Butler. Whenever there's a, uh, we get into the third, the third quarter. There's always a turnaround. Usually, uh, sometimes in the beginning of the quarter, sometimes at the end of the quarter. But at the end of the games, in the fourth quarter, I have no doubt about the Heat. Jimmy Butler. It's fucking Jimmy Butler. Playoff Jimmy is a real thing. Like there's, there's so many haters of the Miami Heat. They're like, oh, they're frauds, whatever, bubble frauds. Yo, Jimmy Butler. Playoff Jimmy is a fucking real thing. If y'all haven't figured it out, like before, you know, you haven't figured out with the Bucks, y'all haven't figured out with the Knicks. Jim, Jimmy, but Jimmy Butler is gonna lay down on the line. Like at, at the end of the games, as far as closers, somebody I, I don't have to worry about is fucking Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler is always gonna fucking grab the ball. Either he's gonna fucking put his neck on the fucking on the hoop, or he's gonna pass it out and and, and, and try to facilitate and find. At the end of the games. The one thing I have to worry about is fucking Jimmy Butler. So, first game, game one, I was expecting like, yo, they might lose this first this this first game. Yeah. By the by the the last five minutes of the fourth quarter, they fucking they, they, the the Boston Celtics got uh they, they they disappeared they vaporized they just like disappeared they just they they weren't there. The I don't want to talk about, you know, we can, we can talk about uh, uh, Jason Tatum. Uh, he fucking got zero out of zero in the last uh, fourth quarter. Couple, yeah, he does not. Fourth quarter, he disappears. This guy, not nowhere to be shown. Quarter. This guy's supposed to be, you know, top player and, you know, not. Nah, not he, he put it all on the 76ers. That's why he had two back to back games in the fourth quarter where he came. Yeah, he puts up 51. He, he used all 50, his energy. He's done. 51 in the game seven. He comes into the Miami series, disappears in, 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 in the fourth quarter. Hey, that's and that's what you need. And listen, like I said, Jimmy Butler, as far as like the end of games, closing games, the one person on the Heat, you know, I have a lot of questions like, oh, who's going to do it? You know, is Duncan Robinson going to show up? Is he going to shoot threes? Is Max Schrue showing up? Who's, and who's they have. Is Gabe Vincent going to defend? Is Bam Adebayo going to show up? You know, Bam Adebayo plays defense. Is he going to be on, on off? As far as questions on the Heat side, the one person I don't have to ask questions about is fucking Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler is always going to close out. Bro, this guy is bending over. Look, exhausted. He's bending over like this. Gabe, you look bending exhausted. Over. Listen, I'm a- <laughs> so it's- so we talk about game one, game two. Anyways, um, yeah, oh, boy, man. The- by the way, this leads on to my point where I felt like 
But this leads this brings to my point how like how it felt like every time the Celtics had a lead, like they let the Heat come back. Yeah. The Heat erased the nineteen. The Heat went on a nineteen-two run in the second quarter yeah. to bring them back into yeah. into range. Yeah. It's like the Celtics couldn't kill them. Like it was just like. And I'm telling you, I'm watching. Well, and that's what you need to do them on go the, to the road. Pain. Keep it close it's, on the road, and you close it out. Because the biggest thing in playoffs, when a, when the home team goes on a run, you, it's hard to come back. It's it's hard to come back, and that's what's happening with the Lakers. But the Heat are finding a way. They're they're hitting timely shots. Duncan Robinson coming in. I think he's shooting forty five percent from the three. He'll come in for two minutes, hit two threes. All right, back to the bench you go. Shout out to your boy yeah. uh, Gabe Vincent. Shrewd, like Vincent, yeah, I, yo, Vincent, yo, he's, he's who, been playing. Who are right? these guys that yeah. you're getting on your team? Like mid range, little layups, steals, and, and the biggest story is like Martin all, had 25 points. The, the thing with Robinson, yeah. Robinson's like he's hit or miss. Like Gabe was saying, he's like well, he, he can. He can he, now. He, he's actually back. No, I mean back. game one, he has zero points. I well, mean, how many shot attempts? I don't know. He still has zero points. What the heck did he play though? Like yeah. zero points, but did he did he play this bullshit? But either way, it's like I've no, and I was just looking at his recent games. It's just like a lot of the times it's like I don't know. He'll get like a a double digit point game, but then the next game he'll get like three, six, zero. That, and that, that's way. why he's not a starter. That's exactly. I how do he's think. I do think if the Heat want to go on like a serious run for the finals. You're gonna need to like to go against the Nuggets, man. You're gonna need everybody. Like you're gonna need. Oh, you got him winning. To actually, you got him winning already. You, you, you got him winning. No, I'm just saying. I'm saying like if if you're gonna like I'm if you're gonna make it to the next round, like you got to have everybody clicking. I, I mean, think. yeah, as like, a you, you, you go against the the one seed potentially. In you the got, you got to yeah. have like Kevin Love actually scoring points. Kevin yeah. Love was non-existent this game. He did get a couple rebounds, but other yeah. than that, like. He's been another one that's been like he'll have like a decent game, but then he'll just like disappear. But he's also old too, so it's like how much can you expect? But I think over, him. overall, I think you know the biggest thing was the shooting, right? Because in the regular season, the Miami have haven't been shooting well as far as like wow. three points. What they, they haven't shoot, they, they haven't been shooting well. They haven't playing cohesive. But as we got into closer and closer to the playoffs, you know we had a terrible game against Atlanta. Uh, we went down, whatever. Um, you know the Miami Heat have been playing. Playoff basketball, like I said, I cannot deny Jimmy Butler as a postseason playoff player. Um, he embodies like all the things that that he culture, or whatever. Everyone wants to like, laugh at he culture, or whatever. He embodies all the stuff that we need. Um, everybody's been playing well. Bam Adebayo, who's been playing terrible, I've been a little bit low on Bam Adebayo, but as far as this playoff series, Bam Bam Adebayo has been playing well. Um, who else you want to throw out? Duncan Robinson. Duncan Robinson has been garbage. Garbage in the regular season. He's been uh, coming off the bench. He's been shooting well in the postseason. In general, he's overall, been He's been decent, yeah, coming off the bench. He hasn't been, like, amazing, but... Yeah. Um, Max Shrew has been Max Shrews has been good for us uh, 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 in spots. All right? like, uh, usually, you know, we think of him as, as a shooter, and a lot of these teams, especially the Boston Celtics, they've been scared of us shooting threes deep, but he's been good for us uh, doing quick, you know, quick runs to the, to the basket and doing quick layups. Um... So overall, that's what I'm like, with the Celtics, I feel like they're scared to defend in the paint. Like, I feel like if the Heat just keep on, like, that's why Bam was able to just dominate. And he didn't get a shit ton of points, but he dominated rebounds. And and then, like, also, like, I mean, he got, like, 20-something points, 23 points. Yeah. And, like, I just felt like the Celtics just let him untouched Bro, inside. And it's, funny, it's funny you're saying that now for this series because I wish they were saying that for the last series against Philly because they couldn't get shit in the paint. And Bede was nowhere to be found in there, getting uh, guarded by old Al Horford, locking him up. So it, it's crazy how, you know, the change of dynamic, uh, depending on what team you're playing yeah. in the playoffs. Hey, bro, I never get scared. Listen, if we're, listen, the game is tied. We're up a couple. We're up four. The game is tied. We're down nine. We're down. I never get scared because you know why? Because I've seen so much. I've seen this team come back from so much before, like either late in the third quarter or early in the fourth quarter, late in the fourth quarter. Um, that that I, I don't I don't get scared. Like I'm not worried about this team. Like as far as uh, the way they're able to close games, like I said, the way they're able to close games, it, it's it's uh, it's something that Boston should be scared about because now we took two. We went to your town. We took two two home games. The series doesn't start Huge. until the away game wins. A, a, a you know I mean wins uh wins an away game, 
And we took two games from y'all. We're going back to Miami. You think I'm worried about anything? We're up two. We're up two. I wasn't Here's worried. Thing, about- though. Now, worst case scenario, you're probably going to split coming back home. That's a fact. You think we're going to split? Think- yeah, it's a fact. See, you say it's a fact. I, 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 think it's a, I think it's a split. Whether it's game three or four. And I'm just being real. I'm, I'm with, I'm I'm with JoJo, too. I think, I think Celtics whether- eventually going to turn it up. They're going to turn it up and get that. Because spot. look, last year they they won on the road multiple times. I know it's a, I know it's a completely different year. I understand that, but they're going to find a way. Now, my question for you is: Will you be more concerned in losing Game Three or losing Game Four? Uh, I'm not worried about them splitting any game. So if they split, if if listen, I always give respect to any professional team. All right, I always give a gentleman sweep. Right, it's always heat and five. I always give you the away team one, but the fact, the 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 effort, and we we seen the fucking Boston Celtics disappear in the fourth quarter. Jason Tatum zero. How many points? You, you gotta pull up the stat. Let me pull up the stat. Jason Tatum has pulled. Uh, let me let me pull it up. Pull it up. I have one of these stats here. He's he's up in like zero for zero. No 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 attempts in the fourth quarter. Zero whatever. Like how is that? He's supposed to be. He's supposed to be. You know, MVP quality. Uh, one of these top players, All NBA. Uh, how, how does he disappear? If that's your best player, I'm telling you right now, Jimmy Butler is the best player on the court. Jimmy Player is the best player on the court. No, and that's he, a fact. He's, that's a fact. He that's closes fact. games. He closes. The one person on the Heat I don't have to worry about is fucking Jimmy Butler, and he's been proving it over and over again. If you haven't. If you don't believe it this year, look at last year. If you don't believe last year, look at the year before. Look at the bubble, whatever you want to say. Like, there's a lot of, uh, you know, oh, there's a lot of hateration, holleration in the desert. But, like, Jimmy Butler is, like, the real thing. Like like I said, playoff Jimmy, Hemi Butler, it's the real shit. He, he's a different player in the playoffs. And you can't deny, like, the impact that he puts on the field. Like, he's always going to give it. He's always going to leave it on the fucking court. He's going to give 100 He's gonna talk trash. I mean, do we have to talk about like Jojo? Did you see? And he doesn't uh, get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Jojo, do what? He I was poked the bear. Last night. Okay, Jojo, do we have to talk night. about that? We gotta Yo, talk about that. Oh my! He get in when his I face. Saw that, I was I was yeah. laying on the couch. I got up and I was like, no, he didn't. <laughs> and they were down. The Miami yeah. Heat were down like said, nine, no. seven points. I said, no, he. They didn't. were down he seven said, points. He, he saw Jimmy smirk. He was like, okay. He's like, you thought I was playing hard? Now you thought. <laughs> you thought, you thought. And then oh. Jimmy don't get hurt either in in oh, in the man. playoffs. I mean, he had an, un- he had an thing, ankle. He, yo, he's recently coming off an ankle, so there's a little bit of. Uh, but I'm saying, like over the course of the years, like he's he's usually always in general, he's, he's there. He's he there. does a lot he's of low management in the beginning of the year. So. Yeah, there's a lot of I'm injured in February. There's a lot of like so, but you know, that's why like listen. I just love the fact that Jimmy wasn't settling with these. You know, three point shots and no, no, he was taking them to the hole. Yeah, posting them up, fadeaway jump shot, floaters, layups, like that's what you're gonna get. Yeah. That's what you're gonna get from him. He he fucking he picks what whatever whatever the the team is gonna give him. Like yo, if they're gonna go down yeah. low, we gotta look yeah. for assists. I've got to shoot a three right here. I got to shoot a three. He he'll he'll pick and uh, his whatever shot f- decision making has been on point so far yeah. uh, in the playoffs. And that's what I love about him, dog. I He's love, making the I, right decisions. Like yes. you can tell, like so, he drives when he needs to drive. He'll he'll do a, a mid range when he needs to pull up. Like he's he's assessing the core and looking yes. for his opportunities. Yes. And I could see that watching, and I'm like, oh, that that's why he's he's, he's making all these shots. He's making the smart shots. Yeah, yeah. Like even yeah. the tough shots, one out of two, two out of three. He's making those tough shots too. Like. Yeah, he's he spinning. He's looking for there. his man. He's either looking for Bam yeah, Adebayo, yeah. who's running toward, towards the rim, yeah. or he's looking at to, uh, towards a three, whatever. He he's making, like you said, like he's making the smart decisions on all his. Shit. So he has to take that tough fade. He'll take the tough fade, but all right. two out of so three, let's go into predictions. How how does this series end? By the way, let's talk about predictions because when we first got into this, the game one, it was like ninety seven percent Boston, three percent Miami. Now I look today, it was supposed to be like sixty five percent Boston. 35% Miami. But Julian, you got to pull it up. You have all the numbers. Isn't it still well, like no, do, do, pre- predict because this is for the championship outright. But like, okay. go, go championship outright. Like straight up. Like, no, go, go talk about the series. No, just the bro, series. What do you predict? I got Miami, series? bro. I got Miami in six, bro. I got Miami in six. In six? Miami I see Miami, six. Miami in six. I got, really? I got six. Yeah, I think, I think they lose the game. I think he lose one at home. Um, 
And I think Celtics win but at home on game thing. five. They they have an opportunity to, to go up 3-0, though. That's the thing. So if they if they go up 3-0, we're basically we'll saying see. that they might lose. Yeah, if they go up 3-0, what are the odds of them losing two in a row? To me, I, I still think I think even if the, I think even if they do go up 3-0, I think they lose two in a row. I is think Scott, Celtics are gonna win one and then Celtics go back home. Then they go back home to get another one, but then they lose again when they go back to is Scott Miami. Foster. Is Scott Foster there? The Scott Foster. I, <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, bro, it's it's still the Celtics. Like, it, uh, regardless Listen, of how you look at them, like it's still the Celtics, the best one of the best teams in the East for the past like reg- how many years now? Like, regardless hey, of how how deep this series, right yeah, Miami doesn't have home home court, and regardless of how deep this series goes, we already took two games away from them in Boston. So, like, you cannot if you're a Boston we have fan, a different, we going have home a in Boston. Conversation saying that Heat are down 0-2 coming to home right now. Then yeah, that's a like, different oh. conversation. We were like, oh, shit. You know what? Man, I'd be like, yo, they're playing with house money, you know, with their eight <laughs> seed. I'd be like, ah, oh, whatever. Oh, no. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I think yeah. even if they T go up 3-0, I still think yo. I think Boston can pull out two back-to-back. back-to-back. Especially if one of those games. Especially if one of those games are at home. Boston, I mean, obviously they lost these two home games now, but Boston is a good home team in general. Yeah. They don't have a good right. home I mean, record. I think it's a good spot where we can leave off for this episode, right. so... So, did you want to go to championship outright, Gabe? I know Gabe really wants to see these. Oh, Here championship is. is going to be Nuggets. It's going to be Nuggets Heat. I know, but no, nobody's picking the Heat. Everybody, look, look, Lakers Heat are very, you know. Uh, Damn, they give the Heat a better chance than the Lakers. That's Damn. why. <laughs> well, that's because we have to get by Denver. So, if, if Denver has the best odds and we have to get by them, then obviously that that's the odds. Of yeah, it's going to put us at the bottom. They My, still got the Celtics come back with better odds. Miami's getting no respect, man. No respect in this Eastern Conference. Somehow, like I said, they were three percent. Now they're thirty-five percent. They're still underdogs. Miami Heat. Listen, we're we're two and zero going home. Yo, oh, if yeah. you guys go up three zero and and Celtics are still favorable, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna laugh that away. They that, they're just, <laughs> they're just, they're just, oh, wow. Celtics are gonna win four in a row. Man. That's what they're saying. Listen, the if you look at the two and zero, once the Vegas team goes down two and zero, the statistics of that. Here, listen, man. Great. Not to get back to it, game three. Actually, I'm gonna just say it's a must win. You gotta win it. You gotta win it. Yeah. Don't Yo, even think. Don't even think you're up 2-0. Think this is your first home game, and you have to win it. Has to be. Yo, can we talk about other uh, NBA news? Because uh, we had. The I draft think. I think. I got. I think the Nuggets are the yeah, safe the, bet here, though. Well, like, I actually I think have if you got to put money on it. Episode. I'm not sure if you guys want to continue. I, I haven't been giving game. Much money. You want to end it right here? If you want to talk, unless you want to talk about your yeah, your favorite player, John ja Morant. Oh, John ja Morant! Oh, listen, man, we got to talk. About, I, I don't want to talk. You know, you know what? Let me save my rant for next week because I have a whole okay. rant on John ja Morant. Listen, I told you I like the kid. Uh, I have a whole rant, but let's end it right here because you know we're talking about John ja Morant. We're in the middle. Like I said, wow. we're in the middle of NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, NFL is making news. But I appreciate. Listen, JoJo, I appreciate you. Thank you. We're down coming down because we had to we had to delay this shit this on Saturday, but yo listen, before that, before that, I, I would like to apologize to Gabe and Heat Nation claiming that they will win against the Miami Heat in seven games, which Gabe took to be disrespectful. And I think they won in six. Was it six or five? It was six. It was but six. you know what? Oh, I, I said he five. It was six. There we go. There we go. Uh, Anyways, I like to publicly apologize to you know what? the Nation. It's claiming they would win in seven, that the Heat would put up a better fight. So con- I, congrats to you guys. Listen, I appreciate you. Thank you. I know you're wearing a fucking Heat jersey right now, but thank you for apologizing. I pre- Julian, it's gonna it's it's a, it's a south it's a South Florida summer, right? It's a South Florida summer. We got it's the hot. Panthers are going. We got the hey, Heat going. Marlins in second it's place hot. right now. Yo, hey, 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 they're the wild card. Mar- they're the wild card. We haven't talked Marlins. about the Marlins. Yo, they're in the wild I mean, card. <laughs> looking, all, looking all right down here. Alicanta, listen, we appreciate everybody checking us out this week. Thank y'all for downloading, subscribing, and Julian, tell them where they can find all the podcasts. So you can find us on anywhere you get your podcasts. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Podcasts, anywhere you get it. You know where to find us. We're also on YouTube and all the social media platforms. And yeah. And also check out Real Fans FC because they have a whole 
uh, soccer part. It's all concentrated on soccer because I'm not an expert, but Julian watches it all. He watches the English Premier League. He watches MLS. It's all he cares about. All that shit. I listen. Oh. All, the my only expert I, expertise I have. Champions is fucking, League final is set. I only want to watch Messi. If Messi comes, then I'm going to be on the fucking show. If not, then uh, <laughs> I'll never gonna see talking. me ever again. Gabe's going to be pulling out stats. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to talk about Messi. When Messi comes here, then I want to talk about it. But uh, listen, we appreciate all the downloads. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you all next week. We'll be here. All, all three of us will be here. Thanks, y'all. Peace. Jimmy B. Peace out.